Yes, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. We've been looking at St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, and now we begin to dig in verse by verse into this passage which shows the absolute preeminence of Jesus Christ in all of creation. Jesus, the Word made flesh, is indeed the image of the invisible God. Now this is important that we're speaking of the Word made flesh as the image of the invisible God. We established that from Pope Benedict in our last show. And it only makes sense because we know in the Trinity that the Son is the image of the Father. He eternally proceeds from the Father as his perfect image in the divine Trinity. He is that image of the Father. But notice that St. Paul isn't speaking of the image of the Father. He's not speaking of the eternal generation of the Son. He's saying something different. He's saying that he is the image of the invisible Godhead. In other words, that we're talking about an image Uh, that shows to us the whole Godhead, uh, the entire Trinity, uh, God himself. That's different than the Word who is God uh, and is the image of God the Father. Also, St. Paul's words would not make sense if he were speaking of the eternal, uncreated Word apart from the Incarnation because how can an image manifest something invisible unless it's visible? So we're speaking here of the visible image of the invisible Godhead, namely Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. This is clear enough. St. Paul confirms that Jesus Christ is the image of the Godhead in his uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And he speaks of Christ who is the image of God. Christ who is the image of God. Uh, the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Jesus Christ, as word made flesh, is this image of the invisible God. And it is he who is going to reveal to us, in the fullness of time, God's eternal plan, uh, revealing to us who God is. Now, Pope Benedict, when he spoke of this passage, he spoke of the word icon. And actually, the word for image in Latin, imago, is rendered uh, imago, but from the Greek, it's actually icon. So Jesus is the icon of the invisible God. And this helps us because we know in uh, the Eastern traditions how important an icon is, an image is. An icon is something that represents to us a heavenly reality in a visible form and actually manifests it, uh, sort of like a window. Uh, for us. So this representing in visible form, Jesus Christ is the icon, this visible icon of the invisible God. St. Paul tells us that in him dwells the fullness of divinity uh, bodily, corporally, so that when we see Jesus, when we see his most sacred heart, when we touch his hands and his feet and his side, we can truly say with St. Thomas, my Lord and my God, uh, because he is that image manifesting, representing to us the invisible God in visible corporal form. Now, I mentioned manifestation. He manifests God. It was God's plan from all eternity that he unite this created nature, nature to himself through the incarnation, the hypostatic union. And so, uh, in Jesus, Uh, we have the manifestation, the full revelation of God's love for us, the full revelation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, He himself tells us uh, that no one, uh, let me find it here, he says that uh, uh, no one knows the Father except through me. Or he said to St. Philip, he who sees me sees the Father. And St. John says earlier in his prologue, No one has at any time seen God. No one. The only begotten Son of God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has revealed him. And so Jesus is this image of the invisible God, uh, revealing to us the Godhead, the Trinity, the life of the three divine persons. 
Let's conclude with a little corollary uh, that flows from this. If the Word made flesh is the image of the invisible God, uh, this tells us something about when God makes us in his image and likeness. Keep in mind that God, according to the Franciscan thesis, God from all eternity first willed Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of the Virgin Mary. And so he is the prototype. He is the image uh, and likeness of God par excellence and the exemplar. So when God creates man in his image and likeness, he first sees Jesus and then we are modeled on Jesus Christ. We are made in his, the image and likeness of God because we are called to be conformed to Jesus Christ, predestined in him to be adopted children of God, our Heavenly Father. Come back in the next show and we'll look at that next phrase of St. Paul in Colossians 1.15, that he's the firstborn of all creation, all creatures. May God bless you and may Mother Mary keep you. Ave Maria. <music>